So yeah, my name is Martin and I will be talking to you about my dissertation research. So I study literature and when I was thinking um, about what I might want to write my dissertation on, I thought I want to read something that is uh, light and something easy. So I thought let's just uh, write about comics. But then I quickly learned that I had misjudged the field a little because what I ended up doing was this. So I will be talking to you about the representation of war trauma in comics. And it is precisely the seeming disjunction between um, the light-hearted form of comics that I had always associated rather with humor and the grim and serious topic that is uh, war trauma that got me going uh, and thinking, why are there so many uh, w comics out there that actually depict those things? And I came to the conclusion that that is the case because the form is particularly well suited to represent them. And I'm going to outline to you why I think that that is the case and try to show you how that works on the page. And final introductory note, whenever I say comic or comic book or graphic novel, I'm referring to the same thing. And I will also be returning to what that thing is in just a minute. But let's start with my take on the traumatic experience. So Freudian psychoanalysis teaches us that whenever we experience bodily harm, it also does something with our psyche. There is a mental wound that accompanies the bodily wound and trauma emerged as the term to describe those wounds. Now we know now that it is not just bodily harm that causes traumatization, but any kind of disruptive events that cannot be fully experienced as they occur. So that means that your usual uh, like day all the things that happen to you become memories and get incorporated into your narrative of self. If there's a traumatizing event, there is a memory that doesn't belong to that, that doesn't fit. And that is um, when trauma occurs. And in, in return then, these events come back to you through symptoms. So people develop pathologies and oftentimes have nightmares or flashbacks and keep re-experiencing uh, their trauma over and over and over again. And the final point on trauma that I want to draw your attention to is how violence is the predominant catalyst for the traumatic experience. So it's usually caused by violence inflicted upon us, violence that we witness, maybe violence that we ourselves inflict upon others, or uh, violence that disrupts our life circumstances. Now I want to move on to uh, how war enters the picture uh, by first defining the term. Uh, war can be seen as the mediation of power relations through violence. So whenever the power balance, either within a given society or between societies, shifts and that shift is brought about through means of violence, we are entering a state of war. And what that adds to trauma is scale. So the traumatic experience, as I have outlined it on the previous slide, might very well be um, the experience of a single individual. But the experience of war is the experience of a whole community, of a whole nation, of a whole country. And now all these people get traumatized and develop their individual symptoms and pathology. And that is also where the difficulty in representation comes in. Because a traumatized community will behave differently as such because of the trauma. But then the trauma itself is constituted of different individual accounts. And they're all very subjective, very individual. It's different key moments that cause traumatization. And it's different symptoms and pathologies that develop. Now, I want to draw your attention to two defining features of comics that uh, are integral to my argument on why it is suited to uh, bridge that gap. First of all, they're a narrative form. They tell us stories, and they do so by relying on image and text combinations. So we have a duality of linguistic and pictorial representation going on simultaneously. And second, these image text combinations occur as sequences. So just like the sentences of a prose novel on the page, we read them one after another. And now I will try to bring those two things, comics and war trauma, together and show you how they intersect. And the key term for this is fragmentation. So as we've just established, the language of comics is fragmented into separate panels and into parallel representation uh, through language and through images. And just uh, similarly, the uh, traumatic self is fragmented. There is a narrative of self constituted of, mem uh, of memories, and then there is an outside memory that doesn't belong. But also, um, communal experiences are fractured into various individual accounts, um, and that is another axis of fragmentation. And there is a third one that I've identified, which is the difference of generational perspectives. So if war occurs and a whole generation of a country gets traumatized, then these people, when um, peace, um, and when there is peace again, return to their family lives and raise their children in an environment that is heavily affected by their trauma. 
And then in turn, these children usually get traumatized as well. And their experience of that war trauma will be very distinct from the first generation survivors. Right, so that was a lot to take in. Let's take a breath and actually look at an example of that. Um, right, so this is uh, a page from uh, Joe Sacco's book, Footnotes in Gaza. It's one of the works that I examine in greater length in my dissertation. And it deals with two events that happened in, the, in Gaza in the mid-50s, in which many Palestinian men were killed. And on this particular page, what we see is a, a moment where all the men of a refugee camp are rallied up into a schoolyard. And as they enter the gate of the schoolyard, there are two soldiers who are uh, waiting there with big bats, trying to beat as many of the men as they can. And I have brought up um, a little zoom of the bottom right of that, of that panel. Uh, it's like, thank you just so that people in the back might be able to identify the details a little easier. So what we see on this panel is uh, in the background, we have uh, these soldiers depicted over and over and over again. We have aggressive facial features, uh, clenched teeth. Uh, we have the, eminent, uh, the element of the, the bat and the weapon that they used uh, featuring again and again. And in the foreground, we have seven of the witnesses that ja Sacco interviewed. Um, he collected many more accounts, but he just chose seven for this panel. Um, and we have their portraits uh, with their names, so it's de-anonymized. And we have in written language quotes of their, uh, from their uh, survival accounts. And I think that makes this page a great example of how the communal experience uh, and the individual experience might be brought together on a single page. So in the background, we have the communal experience. All of these men have been um, beaten uh, as they try to, to pass through that gate. And in the front, we have individual accounts that make up uh, this story. And I think what uh, makes this such a, such a, a, masterful, um, a masterful example is how it also bridges uh, incoherencies in the individual narratives. So some of the men speak about, uh, most of them in fact speak about two soldiers, but some of them report three or more. And what Sacco does is he depicts them over and over again in the background um, and puts the emphasis on the violence. All of these men have been subjected to this violation and to this brutality, and it doesn't matter if it was two or three or more soldiers uh, doing that. What uh, matters is uh, their experience and their, their suffering. And the final point I want to make about this panel is that it operates on two temporal layers. So we have the men speaking to Sacco uh, in the middle of the last decade, and then in the background we have the event taking place in the mid-50s. So although it is one and the same experience that is rendered on both temporal layers in this panel, I think this might be a good example as well how generational gaps could be bridged on the page of a comic. Now, to conclude, as we've established, the traumatic experience of war um, entails a fragmentation of uh, the individual self and our self-images. Um, it uh, fractures communal uh, experiences into individual uh, accounts of trauma, and there are various generational perspectives on it which is paralleled by uh, the fragmentation of the language of comics, which can be broken up into image and text, as well as into uh, different panels ordered in a sequence. And my basic claim is that this parallelism allows for a very potent visualization of war trauma in graphic novels. But now, the all-important question, why would that be an interesting, an interesting thing to know, and why would that motivate us to read more of these, of these books? And I think what they really uh, outline when um, the different fragments of trauma are brought together on a single page and um, examined through their temporal uh, dynamic is uh, how we are all, in fact, produced by war and trauma that was going on around us and is going on around us. So we are not like isolated from conflicts past and present that have been going on here or are going on at the moment somewhere else. And I think what derives from that is a new imperative to show empathy and not close our eyes towards the suffering of others. Because it doesn't matter whatever brought their suffering about, if it's an armed conflict, it has to do with us as well, whether we want that or not. So the next time anyone in this room has a conversation with someone discussing whether we should accept refugees or stop producing weapons, instead of discussing politics or news or history, you might as well recommend them a good comic. Thank you. Oh, totally. Um, I mean, arguably, the Palestine thing isn't over. Um, but also, I've read one, I was a candidate for my dissertation, it didn't make it into it. Um, it was called the Ukrainian and Russian Notebooks. 
by a guy called Igor, he's Italian-Ukrainian. And um, in the, the second edition, the one I bought, there was an afterword that actually showed the war in, uh, in East Ukraine right now. So yeah, that stuff exists. And also there's a, a, a new genre emerging called refugee comics. And the name kind of gives it away. It's like about the experience of these like refugees that we see coming over mainly from Syria, but also from North Africa. And it's going on mostly online. So if you do some Google search, you should be able to locate works of comic accessible, comic, uh, comic works accessible free online that deal with very contemporary conflicts. Um, my second question from somebody else is, can reading comics of or as trauma be cathartic? If so, um, how? Oh my god, I mean that is, depends on how the individual, like how that person changes after reading a comic. It's about making choices, I would say. I don't think a comic has necessarily more or less power to do that than any other cultural product. It's if they highlight something difficult that might have implications for our personal behavior. It's about committing to changing that then. Um, I mean, I hope comics have that power, but I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I'm um, I was quite interested in, in how that, the comic that you showed us just now was based off, yep. I'm assuming, uh, I mean, not assuming, off real people. Mm -hmm. So it's collected through the base, I'm, I'm assuming. Um, is that a specific genre of comics? Is that like a, is it a genre? Is it just that you happen to find mm -hmm. that? The, the issue of genre is really, a, is really a difficult one with comics because they are inherently a hybrid form. So this is a work of so what's called comics journalism. But at the same time, just by drawing something, you're already fictionalizing it. So it's already not the same. It doesn't it necessarily, it's not seen in the same, with the same kind of credibility, uh, like uh, um, a report in a newspaper. So, um, I'm not sure if it has to do with genre, but there's a lot of works out there that are based on that, especially when you look about, um, I look for works that deal with traumatic war experiences, and there's many, many, many of them. They're usually all based off uh, of, yeah, real, real accounts most of the time. There's few fictional narratives. Uh, I can't think of any on top of my head. All of them have their roots in real experiences. And I mean, because this is a work that has like a sort of journalistic uh, endeavor behind it, there's like a lot of witnessing in there. So like it also depicts his journey through Gaza, like Joe Sacco appears as a character and you see him going through these refugee camps, speaking to these old men and he collects lots and lots of accounts. So yeah, that is a prominent feature, but I'm not sure that is necessarily where the genre distinction comes into play. Hi, uh, thank you for the talk, this was very interesting. I was just wondering for your dissertation, are you uh, looking only on this specific uh, comics or are you exploring more? It's funny that you ask that. This is not scripted, by the way, but there was a second work. <laughs> yeah, like before timing reasons, that example didn't, didn't survive the 10-minute the cut. But yeah, there's a second work called uh, Soldier's Heart by uh, a cartoonist called Carol Tyler. Um, the full edition of that only appeared 2015, and it deals with her personal um, exploration of her father's trauma of survival of the Second World War. So um, yeah, for reasons of word count, I'm only exploring those two in my in my um, dissertation. And the specific focus with that one would be the intergenerational dynamic a bit more. This is something that Sacco doesn't explore in the same depth, I think. Um, but yeah, there's, there's like many more that I would have liked to choose, but with 6,000 6, words, you can only talk about so and so many books, yeah. Uh, yeah, one more. Have you stumbled across something that, uh, like comics that uh, contradicts in contrary of what you're trying to um. argue for? Um, I mean, not necessarily my argument about the representation of trauma, but in terms of the representation of war, like obviously when I talk about trauma, I'm critical of war and I would like that to be uh, less prominent in, in the world today. And the, the genre of war comics emerged during, like at least in, in the US, um, it emerged during the Second World War and it had a very different, like it was supposed to glorify the soldier and it was supposed to make young people look up to them and want to become soldiers themselves. So I've not really read any of the, the like early war comics emerging during that period, but I assume there, there are works out there that try to glorify war and make it a, make it a good thing. Um, but yeah, I've not read them personally. I consider that a waste of time. <laughs> Maybe that's sort of like another idea to take a look at how the comics pictorial like, war has changed throughout the years from glorifying to kind of. Absolutely, yeah.
that would be an interesting thing to explore, the aesthetics, how they shift from, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Thank you. I'll do that in my next undergrad dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.